Hey guys, welcome to Tiny House Customs. I'm Dan. In today's video, I'm going to measure this thing. I'm going to get all the numbers that are associated with this thing, you know? What's what? What does that mean? How does that, what, huh? So let's just start out. You know, what is the exact width of these things? That is a question, audio is working, that I wanted to know many times over, but I could never get a really straight answer. Well, today we will get that straight answer, kinda. I kinda need somebody to help me though. So give or take a quarter of an inch, this thing is about eight feet. It's got a rounded edge, so I can't really get a good measurement off the corner unless I had somebody holding my tape. But I would say that eight feet on the money is, is pretty close. Honestly, when I'm measuring it, I'm getting uh, 95 and, and three quarters, but 95 and seven eighths is probably what it's at, which means it's probably meant to be eight feet. So now this is a high cube. So they say it's nine foot six high. I doubt it. So we're gonna hook on maybe to something. Stay. Yep, yep, yep. Nine foot six, that's it. That number is correct. Nine foot six tall. And that is from the post, the tippity top there. They say this is a 40 foot high cube. So one would think this is 40 feet long, wouldn't you? I would hope so. So these edges are rounded, so I can't get a measurement, but if I measure from here to here, which is more of a squared edge, it's five inches. So if I hook on here, I can add five inches on the other ends. And it fell out. That's a dick for the ass. Seven inches. One, two, three, four, five, 40, 40 feet. So these things are exactly 40 feet long, eight feet wide by nine foot six tall. So those are the outside dimensions, you know, and those are pretty damn accurate. Uh, some of the other things that I always wanted to know was how much do these things weigh? How much can they hold? All that good stuff. But it'll all tell you right here, max gross weight, which means loading this thing full, including the weight of this thing, it can be a total of 67,000 pounds, 67,200 pounds. Your kilograms for you guys over there. Yes, for you on the other side of the pond. There it is for you. Now the tear, tear is the empty weight of the container. The empty weight is 8,820 pounds, 4,000 kgs. What is it, kgs? Kgs, kgs, kilograms. Uh, max payload, so that max payload is gonna be Minus 8,800 from the 67, you're gonna get 58,380, I believe. Yeah, that quick math in my head, 58,000 pounds. So I could put, theoretically, 58,000 pounds inside this thing, and it would be okay. Now, cutting holes into the side of it, I would definitely think an engineer would say, no, no, not allowed. But if I put 58,000 pounds in this thing, there's something wrong with me. There's no way, no way, not possible. That's a good thing to know is that you cannot, you can't put too much into this thing. It obviously could hold a lot of center blocks or something. Uh, the cubic fit, feet, the cubic feet is 2,692 cubic feet. So that is cubic feet. It's not square footage like on the grounds, which you would think with a house, it's not 2,000 square foot. It's only like 500 square feet. I think it's 480. But yeah, so those are some of the numbers that I wanted to know before I got this thing to kind of help with setting up my foundation, which through internet research, I was able to figure out rough numbers. Uh, but there's also other numbers that I wanted to know for when I'm building this thing. You know, this metal is corrugated, I believe, where it dips in like this. I wanted to know how much that is. I always thought it was about two inches, an inch and a quarter. Yeah, yeah. So from, from the inside of this to the outside of this is an inch and a quarter. Important number. Inch and three eighths on the flange there. But that might be helpful to somebody. I don't know. Let's go inside. So inside the container, these are numbers I wanted to know as well. Again, sorry for the audio. I know it's really bad, really echoey. I'm gonna try to talk lighter. Hopefully it's not as bad. But, so these things are corrugated, right? Is that the right word? I hope it is. But from this point here, the inside bend, to the inside bend, I wanted to know what that number is. I'm getting 92 and 5 eighths. That's 92 and 5 eighths, 92 and a half. I'm gonna call that at 92 and a half inches from the inside to the inside. Now, I should have my phone on me. I'm gonna put my framing right up against this, which is gonna be a three and a half inch stud. So three and a half 
plus three and a half is seven, plus the wall board, let's say half inch, so eight inches. If we measure this, 92 and a half minus eight is seven foot half inch, or 84 and a half inches. So once I'm done building on the inside, this thing is gonna be seven foot half inch wide. You're almost gonna be able to touch the walls. Almost. I'm sure if you're tall, then maybe you could. Another thing, the ceiling height. Now, yeah, you know it's a nine foot six. It's a high cube, it's the taller one. I think the other ones are eight feet. So I got an extra foot and a half. I'm most likely gonna use metal studs for the walls and I'm gonna use two by six framing for the, the ceiling since I'm not really sure about the, uh, the steel studs supporting what I wanna put on there. I wanna do some like reclaimed barn wood on the ceiling. So I, I kinda wanna do some actual two by material and I will bolt it to the, to the side of the trailer. But how tall is it? 106 or eight foot 10. Eight foot 10, that sucks. I'm gonna have to buy 10 footers. 104 and 5 eighths. I could get 104s, right? Isn't that a thing, framing people? Yeah, eight foot 10, eight foot 10. I would say that eight foot 10 is a safe number to go with for your ceiling height. Now, again, doing the two by six plus three quarters on the bottom. So once I do the framing and do the, the paling that's gonna go on there and then do the flooring down here, I'm gonna end up with eight foot three from the finished floor to the finished ceiling. Actually, that's gonna be a little less. So I'm gonna do three quarter. Let's just go with eight foot two. That's minusing a lot of different numbers, but eight foot two and like a quarter will be a safe, safe bet on my finished ceiling height, which is huge. I mean, can you, you can't really see, but I can't touch it. I, I can't jump. That's about all I got. And my feet probably didn't even leave the ground. There is all these like eye hooks or whatever, these hooks to hook stuff onto. Every, every other bay here to tie stuff down. Uh, they are within, they are inside of this. So they're, they're only sticking out an inch and whatever. So they're not gonna be in the way of anything. Don't need to cut them out or anything. On the front, I always thought those, those corner posts were solid corners, like square box tubing, but they're not. They're just bent metal, very beefy. That's like quarter inch thick, strong stuff. But that gives me a nice corner in here. I don't have to do anything weird with my framing and then maybe have it as an accent. I, I can just leave it just the way it is. In the top two corners towards the, the front or the back, back of the trailer, uh, there's these big chunks of metal right here. And uh, those are three inches down. So my two by six is gonna go tight to the ceiling. So I'll cut one that runs inside here, cut one that goes under there, and then my ceiling joists will run across. So those won't be in the way of anything and they'll be concealed within the framing once I'm done. So I don't have to worry about that. One thing I was concerned with is the ceiling not being bowed as much as it is. It does have a good bow in it, but I am kind of concerned of it going flat. So I was thinking once I do my two by sixes across, maybe every other joist, or maybe all the way across every, everything, I'm gonna put some two bys on top of it so it keeps that ceiling up and it won't push out my shipping container. It's one thing I gotta be mindful of is when I'm putting in these ceiling joists that I'm not pushing out because I would believe in the center here if you kept pushing, pushing, pushing with joists, I'll end up flattening that roof and bowing out the sides. So. Something to think about. So these main beams that run the full length of it, the 40 feet, they're about a half inch up on the corner post. So the corner posts stick down past them about a half inch. And then on the ceiling, on the, on the roof, they stick up about an inch. The reason they do that is so that when they stack these things on top of each other, the curvature of this roof will sit inside of that, that gap that's there. Plus I believe they put some locking pins in between them, probably a half inch plate with these little like ball thingies that lock them in. So I would believe you got about two inches. So that roof might curve up two inches, just guessing, but it's probably like an inch and a half. So these joists, just so you know, are four and three quarters. If I butt the plywood, I'm getting about four and seven eighths, five inches. I don't know. It's give or take on this shit right here. I, I don't know what they are. Four and seven eighths. 
See, these are pro they're probably made overseas, so it's metric. What's that, Dan? I don't know either. Don't worry. There's a couple of my viewers now. And then these joists run, looks like one foot on center. 13 inches, 13 inches, 12 and three quarters. What in the hell is happening? I'm gonna be using the rock wool insulation. Hopefully, we'll see if they wanna give me love again. I'd like some love. No, oh, there's the peanut. I've been looking all over for you. Peanut, you weren't in the last video, and you haven't been in this video. Why don't you come over here? Come right here. No, no, I didn't want it all over my ears. I just wanted, you know, maybe you could say hello. Well, hello, guys. Welcome. How do you think of my new death trap? Bernie, you shouldn't play under here. But it's so cool and relaxing. Oh, we're going to spend a lot of time under here, Bernie. We're going to. I didn't look forward to this. Okay. Why do you smell like homeless? I live in a damn tiny house. What do you think, dude? I am homeless. What is your address? It's a P.O. box. That means you're homeless. Okay, dude, that's mean, Peanut. That's mean. You didn't need to go there. Oh, and there you are homeless, bum. Bye. Okay. Where was I going? Oh, yeah. So I am going to be using Rockwell insulation in here. Hopefully, if they uh, show me some love. So I'll be using their 2x6 insulation, and then I'll probably, instead of ripping them, I'll probably cut like 13 inch, no, what is it gonna be? So yeah, 13 inches. I'll cut 13 inch pieces and stick them in here. Uh, originally, I was gonna do some aluminum on the bottom of this thing and screw it into this, but these are freaking honky tonky beef, beefy boys. So I'm kinda concerned that I won't be able to drill into them. This are, these are probably some really hard steel. I mean, I thought I was gonna have to do a lot more work down here. I think I can just paint this. I might hit the bottoms of these with a grinder and then just hit it with some rusty primer and then insulate it. I'm not gonna spend too much time underneath here. I don't really look forward to it at all. And then the camera angles are not flattering when I'm underneath the shipping container. But this whole project underneath here is going to be coming up sooner rather than later because I want to get this thing back down, lower to the ground, so it's a little safer. And uh, yeah, I don't really want to spend time underneath here. Got that. I kind of want to get that measurement that I lied to you about. I'm just going to jump up there. I'm going to leave you here. Inch and a half. So like I said, the, the beams down here are a half inch above the post on the corner and it's a half uh, inch and a half below on the top so if you were to stack one on top of this there would be theoretically a two inch gap between the beams which is going to help with that curvature of the roof now the last thing is when you get these things there's going to be these placards you don't need to keep these on i've been told i am going to take all the stickers and color all that weird shit off there's another one right here it says approved for transit under custom seal it's got a bunch of nonsense manufacturer's number i'll probably leave that one on there because that is like a uh it's like a vin number it's like a it's an identification number id number what's that called serial number yeah it's so you can track them so serial numbers are good but i hope this video was helpful for you i know those numbers that i went over in this video were things that i was looking for when i was trying to purchase a, a shipping container uh, planning things what was the dimension inside? That was like so important to me. I wanted to know that. I wanted to know what the ceiling heights were gonna be. So my tiny house was built on a 20 foot trailer, eight foot six wide. It's much wider than the shipping container. So I won't be able to do cabinets on both sides of it. I could, but I do have plans for it, which I will, uh, once I get some temporary lighting in there, which I'm gonna probably hook up tonight, uh, that way I can film in there better. Uh, I'll do a walkthrough plan of what I want to do inside there, start laying out where my windows are going to go. Just do some of the planning. I'm not going to do a uh, Google SketchUp or uh, what's it called. I'm not doing any type of design. It's all right here. I'm going to throw some paint down on the floors and we'll go from there and see, uh, see how it's going to work out. I've already done it before and walked around on the grass. So I guess next time we come back, I'll have some, some lights and power hooked up inside this thing and I'll take you on a tour of my layout how i'm going to do it and that whole thing and then you know one day we'll get started one day i'm gonna milk this bitch i spent three grand on it gotta milk it right one thing that's going to keep me from really going strong on this at the beginning here is uh i need a good welder and i need a, i want a plasma cutter i don't need a plasma cutter i could use an angle grinder but 
the angle grinders are really dangerous and I've already pressed my luck so many times with those things. I could cut the holes with an angle grinder and but I think a plasma cutter would be a lot safer. And I can get a cheap plasma cutter for about six, seven hundred bucks. Uh, I want to spend about a thousand dollars on a welder. Uh, I know a lot of you are going to be like, reach out to one of those companies. None of them want to work with me. Hobart was the nicest so far to say no. Still waiting on Everlast. Miller's too big to mess with me. In colon erection said no. In colon erection, yeah, they were dicks in my ass. So that's an in colon erection. So all the money that I've left over from purchasing this uh, is going towards the welder. Any future money that comes in from Patreon as well, of, as, well as uh, YouTube AdSense, uh, anytime you view a video, I make a little money. All that money is going into my savings account. And once I get to X amount of dollars, I will purchase the welder and plasma cutter and we can get started on this thing. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I, hope, I really hope it was helpful for you. I know it was stuff that I wanted to know. So if you are new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Love to see new faces, new comments down below, especially if they're just filled with nonsense. They drive me insane. So make sure you leave your nonsense down below. If you liked the video, hit, it, hit the thumbs up. I mean, some people like to leave a thumbs up. I got some splurge on the thing. It's right in the center. That's good. Okay. All right. Peanut, anything to say? Nothing? About time to start warming up. It's been cold as a bitches. Yep. Until next time, I will see you on the next video. Audio. I don't know what I'm doing. I have somehow managed to stay completely sober for the last two videos.